You mentioned two very important bodies. One was the Human Rights Commission previously, which was really the forerunner of the Human Rights Council. Tell us a little bit about what the Commission on Human Rights did and what the Council on Human Rights is doing or is supposed to do to replace the old commission. The Commission on Human Rights was an important body foreseen in the Charter and established very soon afterwards um, in 1946. And it was as chair of the Commission on Human Rights that Eleanor Roosevelt uh, uh, chaired the body that drew up the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And the Human Rights Commission was responsible for many of the key conventions on the rights of the child, convention for the elimination of discrimination against women, convention against torture and so on. But there were problems. It was becoming politicised and people were critical of the fact that countries with very bad human rights records were serving sometimes as chair of the Commission on Human Rights. So uh, it, the, it was decided to reform and in fact that reform came just after my time but I follow it very closely. The Human Rights Council is a smaller body directly under the General Assembly. The Commission had been under an, another body, the Economic and Social Council. It, it has a stricter membership criteria. You've got to get 96 votes, positive votes in the General Assembly, and that's hoped will rule out some of the worst offenders. At the same time, it's open to all countries, and there is a wisdom in letting countries that don't have very good human rights records participate because they can learn. They can become involved in what you do to improve your human rights uh, capacity and, and, and uh, protections. And uh, it is continuing this work. Um, it has passed just recently a declaration on indigenous peoples, something that we've been working on for a very long time. It passed a new convention for people with disabilities. So in a way it's extending that treaty range of rights um, to those who were excluded from earlier provisions. They were covered in principle but not really. And this gives uh, those with disabilities a new convention to work with and the civil society groups that support them and the governments must respond. Mm -hmm. Now as someone who worked closely with the Commission on Human Rights, as someone who knows this process very well, probably better than uh, in it, most people in the whole world, <laughs> to be quite honest. Well, there are experts that are more expert than well, me. Well, <laughs> true, but you were right there. You were on the inside. <laughs> but as you look at the newly established Human Rights Council, which is really sort of getting its legs right now, sort of uh, sort of feeling its way along, determining what it, it wants to do, what it can do, what recommendations would you make to strengthen it and to make it a more effective body and to really deal with some of the, the major human rights problems that are in the world? It does have some new powers. For example, the power of universal review. Every state, not just the poor states, but every state, the United States, the modern Ireland, are all going to be subject to a review by the Human Rights Council, which will take time, but it will set a kind of standard. Honestly, the best way to make progress is for governments to care more and to allow civil society to play more of a role in holding governments accountable. I often felt that the states that wanted to uh, weaken or minimize the role of the former commission and the current Human Rights Council got up early in the morning, they had their pencils ready in their computers and they were in weakening the provisions, putting in amendments that were not helpful. And the countries that had a lot of rhetoric about human rights were lazy or indifferent and did not go in and fight for the human rights in the way that Eleanor Roosevelt wants us all passionately to fight for human rights and make the instruments stronger, make governments more accountable, tackle corrupt officials, um, make the world um, a fairer place because of the implementation of human rights. Mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, and the main purpose of Global Connections Television is to focus on international issues and the role of the United Nations in dealing with the many of these international issues. My guest today is someone who is very involved in a very important area when she was with the United Nations and is still involved today, and that's the area of human rights. Mary Robinson served as United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights from 1997 to 2002, and she was the President of Ireland from 1990 to 1997. As a matter of fact, Mary Robinson was the first female President of Ireland. Madam President, we're delighted you're with us today on this program. We're talking about the Human Rights Council, the newly established Human Rights Council. As you look at it, and again, you know this system very, very well, it, do you feel that well, first of all, some of the media, when they commented on, they used to love to say about the Human Rights Commission, the failed Human Rights Commission, which the human rights specialists and people who know the commission didn't feel that way to a large degree. There were problems, obviously, because human rights is a very sticky I issue when you have certain governments who view what citizens or non-citizens may be doing. But as you look at this uh, situation, 
with uh, the coverage by the media. How did how do you perceive this? Do you think the human rights the old Human Rights Commission and the new Human Rights Council really get a fair coverage by the media? I know it depends. There are some media sources who have a a grudge against the United Nations. Mm -hmm. They would never say anything positive <laughs> about the UN. But how do you feel about the media coverage? I sometimes feel that uh, it's a pity that more of the sort of positive work that is being done isn't covered more. Uh, the way in which there is the building of more effective uh, systems of holding government to account. Um, and the high points of media coverage are usually uh, when there are controversies between governments. It's an intergovernmental body after all. And it, it sometimes is to do with an election of countries with poor human rights records. Sometimes it's to do with failures to address well really egregious human rights situations. Take Darfur. You know, the, the, the fact that really, uh, although there have been um, uh, commissions sent there, the High Commissioner has gone there, there have been reports. It hasn't resulted in protection on the ground. And then um, the issues in relation to the Middle East, particularly the Israeli-Palestinian issues, um, are issues which the UN has resolutions on, but Israel feels that those resolutions are very targeted against it, and it always gets support from the United States. And the Palestinian people feel, why are those resolutions not upheld? Why, why is it that there's always this veto? So there's a kind of double victimhood. And uh, I think it's very difficult to not have that very politicized at the UN level. It shouldn't be, but unfortunately it is. Mm. And uh, so it depends on the issues, but the media, um, I think, find some of the more institution building at the UN level quite boring, whereas in fact it isn't. It's the way in which you hold governments and also bad violators of human rights to account. You stop impunity, you bring them to trial, or you say to governments, you said um, that you would uphold the right to health, for example. That means you must have a budget that takes health, um, it makes it a priority in your government. You must have a health plan, preferably, that reaches everyone, so that if you live in a poor village or in a slum, you have access to a bare minimum of health. That's not the case in many poor countries. Mm -hmm. That's very true. You mentioned Darfur, and of course we've seen horrendous human rights violations in that area and in many other areas of the world too. But we were talking about some specifics earlier. Let's talk, we'll use an example right now of some specifics of Vietnamese boat people. Here were people who were leaving what they considered to be a repressive or an uncomfortable area and they came looking for refugee status. What are some of the human rights issues or concerns that they might have even though they're in a more peaceful setting? I think these are really the concerns of our modern globalizing world. Uh, so many people are forced from their homes, either by violence or sometimes just by absolute abject poverty. They have to get out. The, those who leave Senegal in small boats and try to get to southern Europe, and so many of them die in the water. That's the first thing. They've lost their lives. When they land, they have usually no papers. They have no knowledge of where the next meal will come from. They may be um, put into centers where they may not be well treated. Um, families become separated. It's worst for women and children, and, uh, and obviously the elderly. And we have many people. There are over 16 million refugees who are entitled to look for refugee status. Um, um, and there are even more internally displaced in countries. Those who are displaced because there's conflict in another part of the country or ethnic violence. And um, that's a, a terrible tragedy. Uh, last September, with a number of other women leaders, we visited eastern Chad on the border with Darfur and visited internally displaced Chadian families, uh, citizens of their country, whose village was 80 miles away. But they couldn't be in the village anymore because of roaming armed uh, types. They had really very few human rights. Their children weren't able to be in school, their health care was completely neglected, and they were still in fear if they went out for firewood of being raped. And there was nobody who would protect them and take up their case. So now you have a European Union uh, presence of military and some protection, uh, policing in the camps and the situation. I can't say it's better, but at least we're beginning to realize what needs to be done. Mm. And so for those who have to leave, like those boat people, um, uh, from the beginning, really all their human rights are weakened and some are completely violated and they lack effective protection even though we have new principles like the responsibility to protect which the general assembly adopted in 2005 that still isn't being implemented as it should be